In this class, we will discuss what is the condition of identification of the simultaneous equation system. Actually, what we do, I will use some economic example and see how you apply this condition to this model so that you can get consistent estimate of the structural parameter. And I will also give some example of actually how you solve for the model. And what I will also discuss what are, what are the possible method of estimation of simultaneous equation system. So, let me discuss the condition of identification. The condition of identification is broadly classified as rank condition and order condition. So, let me start with order condition. Let g be the number of endogenous variable included in the equation and k is the total number of variables missing from the equation under consideration. Now, if k is equal to g minus 1, then we say that the equation is exactly identified. If k is greater than g minus 1, then the equation is over identified and if k is g minus less than g minus 1, the equation is under identified. Now, rank condition. Now, order condition is necessary, but not sufficient. Now, in order to have rank condition, you need rank of d must be equal to g minus 1, where g is the total number of endogenous variable in the model and d is the metric consisting of the parameters of the coefficient excluded from the equation under consideration, but included in the other equation of the system. Now, if rank of d is equal to g minus 1, then the model is identified. If rank of d is less than g minus 1, then the equation is under identified. Now, rule of identification if k is equal to g minus 1 and rank of d is equal to g minus 1, then you say that the equation is just identified. And if k is greater than g minus 1 and rank of d is equal to g minus 1, the equation is over identified. And if k is greater than or equal to g minus 1 and rank of d is less than g minus 1, the equation is under identified. And if k is less than g minus 1, the equation is also under identified. So, what we say that the order condition is necessary, but not sufficient. What we need in addition to the order condition is the rank condition, because in case of 3, you say you can see that even if k is greater than or equal to g minus 1, that is the order condition is satisfied, but rank of d is less than 1, g, rank of d is less than g minus 1 and hence the equation is under identified. So, even if you have the order condition to hold, unless the rank condition is not satisfied, the equation is under identified. Now, let us apply the demand supply model that you are considering. Now, in the original demand equation, demand is expressed only as a function of price and supply is a, uh, only as a function of price. In equation 1, g is the number of endogenous variable is 2 and no uh, exogenous variable and no exogenous variable from the equation, um, variable are missing from the equation and hence we find that the while calculating the order condition, you find k equal to 0 because you are not excluding any of the exogenous variable and g minus 1 is equal to 1 and hence k is less than g minus 1, the equation is not identified. And similarly for equation 2 also, k is equal to 0 and g minus 1 is equal to 1 and hence k is less than g minus 1. So, uh, uh, in our earlier example, we have in given intuition behind why the parameters of the uh, equation are not identified and here you can demonstrate the mathematical condition why actually you are not getting the values of the structural parameters. Now, take the example of demand supply model where we have only rainfall. 
so quantity demand is expressed only as a function of price but quantity supplied is function of price and rainfall now while calculating order condition you find that k equal to 1 and g minus 1 is equal to 1 and hence k is equal to g minus 1 hence for equation 1 order condition is satisfied and for the first equation of the system d is basically gamma so rank of d is 1 and hence the rank condition satisf is satisfied and the first equation is just identified because k is equal to g minus 1 and rank of d is equal to g minus 1 that basically implies you have exactly rank condition to satisfy rank condition and order condition to satisfy and as a result all the parameters of the supply and demand equation is identified now take equation 2 you find that k is less than g minus 1 and hence equation 2 is not identified now take the example of demand supply example where you have income as an argument in the demand function and rainfall as an argument in the supply function so you are excluding income from the supply equation and also excluding rainfall from the demand equation now while calculating order condition you find that the number of exogenous variable excluded from the first equation is 1 and number of endogenous variable included is equal to g and that is equal to 2 and 2 minus 1 is 1 and hence k is exactly equal to g minus 1 and order condition is satisfied. Now for the first equation of the system d is uh, minus c2 and rank of d is equal to 1 and hence the first equation is just identified. Now take the identification of the second equation. Here also we find k is equal to 1 and g minus 1 is equal to also 1 and k is equal to g minus 1. Hence for equation 2 order condition is satisfied. And for the first uh, for the second equation again the d matrix turns out to be minus c1 and hence rank of d is equal to 1 and hence equation 2 is just identified. What we see that in this case demand equation and supply equation is also both the equations are identified we have already discussed the intuition behind that because both demand equation and supply equation have unique statistical form and they are not confused with the origin or with the Mongrel equation. Now let me then discuss the identification under general homogeneous linear restriction. Here the order condition is that r must be greater than or equal to g minus 1 where r is the number of restriction into the model and rank condition is um, suggests that uh, suppose the rank condition restriction can be written uh, represented as a1 phi1 equal to 0 where a1 is the first row of the coefficient matrix and necessary condition and sufficient condition for first equation to be identified a1 phi1 is equal to 0 or rank of a phi1 is equal to g minus 1. Take for example demand and supply model. Uh, where demand is a function of price and supply is a function of rainfall along with price and uh, restriction on the first equation is beta to 1 equal to 0 and this can be in terms of the restriction the phi matrix phi 1 matrix turns out to be 0 0 0 1 and rank of a phi 1 is equal to rank of 0 c and which is equal to 1 and which is again is equal to g minus 1 if c is not equal to 0. So, r1 is equal to g1 and first equation is exactly identified. So, what we get both the order condition as well as the rank condition is satisfied in the in this in the case and hence the demand equation is identified. Now, come to the restriction on the second equation here r2 is equal to 0 which is less than 1 and which is equal to g minus 1 and hence the second equation is not identified. 
So, let us consider another example where you have two endogenous variables y1 and y2 and two exogenous variables z1 and z2 uh, with a linear expression and suppose you have beta 1 1 equal to 0 and beta 1 2 equal to 0 and uh, you have beta 2 2 equal to 0. Now, for the first equation you have uh, beta 1 1 and beta 1 2 equal to 0. So, number of restriction is equal to 2 and which is equal to g minus 1. Uh, so, r is greater than g minus 1. So, order condition hold and rank of a phi 1 equal to 1 and which is equal to g 1 minus 1 and equation 1 is over identified. Now, come to the equation 2 r 1 is equal to 1 because for the second equation you have only one restriction beta 2 2 equal to 0 and g 1 minus 1 is equal to 1. So, r is equal to g minus 1, but here you find that rank of a phi 1 is equal to 0 and hence equation 2 is not identified. So, this is an another example where you can see that even if the order condition holds the equation is not identified since rank condition is not satisfied. So, the basic distinction this uh, of this method with that of the single equation method is that here identification restriction of all the equations are important which is not needed in the case of single equation method. In single equation me method while estimating ith equation we need identifying restriction of the ith equation only, but not the identifying restriction of the jth equation. But in case of system method what we need identification of all the equation taken together because all the equations are estimated simultaneously. Now, limited information maximum likelihood method is a system method is a single equation method, but full information maximum likelihood method is a system method. The reason behind that while estimating limited information maximum likelihood method, our information is limited to the extent that we are considering only the identification condition of the ith equation and not the other equation. But in case of full information maximum likelihood method, we are taking into account identifying restriction of all the equation of the model. Accordingly, in system method, we also take into account the cross covariance restriction among all the equation because all the equation are estimated simultaneously. Now, let us consider some illustrative example. Let us have uh, considered the industry data of industry W for country A and demand supply model for the commo commodity W B. Uh, quantity demanded is a price of W and price of B where price of B is the price of the substitute commodity, Y is the income and A is the capital uh, or advertising exp expenditure and S is the storage cost. So, in the supply equation we are incorporating the storage cost along with the price of the commodity and in the demand equation we are uh, incorporating the price of the commodity along with the substitute commodity. For example, suppose you are estimating the demand for tea, the substitute commodity may be coffee. So, you have to take into account demand for coffee as well as of tea and as a result the price of the coffee as well as price of the tea matters. Now, we find that in the demand equation you have only instrumental variable S, but for the supply equation you have three in, uh, instrument P, B, Y and A and OLS estimation of the demand function leads to the following information. You can find that P, W has a long, wrong sign and also not significant. And taking P w as an endogenous variable and treating S as an instrument, you can find out the instrumental variable method of estimation and the accordingly you can get the following estimate of the demand function. In any case, we find that uh, here also the price of W is uh, insignificant and appear with this wrong sign, but the income uh, variable turned out to be statistically significant and you find that income elasticity of demand is something around 4.0 uh, respectively in the present example. 
Similarly, you can take another example of price and wage where price depends on wage and wage depends on price, unemployment and productivity. Here also you see that some kind of simultaneity involved. For example, change in the error term of the wage equation will lead to change in the equation which in turn affect the change equation. And here also you can take the data on price, wage, unemployment, productivity and can have a simultaneous equation system by using any of the method. Now, in the two stage least square method we obtain the values of the parameter in two stages. Uh, in the first stage we use the reduce form of the model to get the estimated value of the, the dependent variable and from that we use we plug the estimated value of the equation in the original structural equation to get the structural estimate again applying OLS. Now, uh, let me have some comparison of the estimator OLS uh, implies biased estimate and inconsistent estimate. However, uh, it has smaller variances and less sensitive to data and specification. Single equation method coming to the single equation method uh, you have 2 SLS and LIML and there are some advantage of consistency and among if we consider 2 SLS and LIML and uh, they are uh, numerically exactly identified the both will be equal and for the over identified case 2 SLS and LIML are asymptotically identical and there are some advantage of 2 SLS over LIML because application of 2SLS is much more simple as compared to LIML. Obviously, there are some advantage of LIML over 2SLS and for example, uh, if we consider the equation 1 y1 equal to c of y2 plus epsilon 1 and y2 equal to 1 by c1 of y1 uh, minus 1 by c1 times epsilon 1. Then you find that the application of 2 SLS from 1 is not uh, exactly equal to the inverse of 2 SLS from 2 if over, over identified and LIML of C from 1 is exactly equal to inverse of 1 by LIML of 1 by C from 2 even if it is over identified. And in exactly identified case you can find that um, uh, gamma from uh, 1 is exactly equal to. So, what we see that if exact even if it is exactly identified 2 SLS of C from 1 is exactly is equal to 1 by 2 SLS from 1 by C from 2 and obviously, there are better finite sample properties. And in case of system method you say that advantage of a single equation method you have greater efficiency and uh, there is no gain if all the equations are exactly identified and errors are uncorrelated uh, across different equations and in, in case of FIML no gain if all equations are exactly identified and no covariance uh, restriction on sigma. However, great efficiency in gain uh, over both 2 SLS and 3 SLS if the errors are uncorrelated and if the information used in FIML. And disadvantage uh, of the system method is computational complexity. In this class, we have basically discussed what is the condition uh, of identification for the simultaneous equation system and we have discussed some economic example uh, and how you can apply those conditions in order to get the equation identified. And we have also uh, used some e economic example from using the by, by using the data and also made a comparison between alternative method of estimation of the parameters. And apart from that, we have also discussed what are the possible method of estimation of the parameters of the simultaneous equation system.